Good morning, guys. Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Stephen. Uh, it is about 6.20 in the morning. I've got to be in the crew room at 7.14. I've got plenty of time. I am right by the airport, and i got a great parking spot this morning, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, it's a bit of a birthday gift. Uh, today is March 21st, 2023, and I'm tur I turned 54 years old this morning. I'm kind of a little bit upset about it. I'm a little bit sad. I kind of want to cry a little bit. It was very hard to leave the house this morning. Um, I did not want to leave my cats this morning, but he felt very, very needy. He's been, he's, he seemed a little extra needy over the past couple of days. Um, and I just didn't want to leave the house. I wanted to stay at home with my cats today, but, um, uh, the silver lining is when I, when I do leave the house, I, I got to go do something I love, um, being a flood attendant. Now that I'll be a flood attendant for another year having survived recurrent yesterday, so that's very good. Um, I'm a little bit, um, I'm feeling less than festive about my birthday, mostly because I don't want to sound too depressing, uh, because it's a, an everyday fact for me, but I spend most of my time alone. I'm a very solitary person. I don't really have, I can't say I have no friends, I have a lot of people in my life who are friendly, but if you've been watching me for a long time, you'll, you'll know that you hardly see any other person uh, other than the occasional coworker and now new family member. But I've, I'm kind of, I've always been used to being kind of solitary, but there are certain days that weighs a little heavier on me. And um, as much as I do like being alone, there are times it um, feels kind of sad, and uh, today is one of those days. So, yeah, um, I wish I had more friends. <laughs> don't I sound sad? Uh, and I don't want to say that you guys aren't friends, but you're also not at the same time, if you know what I mean. You know, real life, um, I, um, yeah. So, um, today... I get to do something I love, which is being a flight attendant. Now that I survived recurrent yesterday, um, I'm going to be flying to Baltimore. I'm sorry, Atlanta, and then flying to Baltimore today. I arrive later on this afternoon. I have a 21 hour layover. Uh, I did buy a small little coconut birthday cake that's in my rolling tote right now. If it survives the trip, uh, and arrives in Baltimore in any semblance of a piece, I'll have a little bit of birthday cake in my hotel room. Um, which sounds even more sad, doesn't it sound pathetic? Um, yeah, so um, this trip, I'm gonna have a nice long layover in Baltimore. I'm gonna stay at the hotel, there's nothing around. I'm not going into DC, you know, late afternoon. Uh, and then I have a 28 hour layover in Portland, which I will leave the, the room just to probably head over to a Goodwill or something. Uh, and then, um, I'm just going to relax and enjoy myself and not have to study for recurrent. Maybe I'll play some video games for like, you know, endless hours. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. Let me stop, um, sounding depressing and sad and socially awkward and, uh, get to work. Right. I will see you in the airport or in Baltimore. I don't know. See you soon. Hey guys. Hi. Welcome to Atlanta. Local time is 320, 321. We'll be boarding in about 12, 15 minutes or so. Um, super easy flight. No drama, no trauma, except for our captain. He is just, he is, he's a piece of work. Uh, but no, really, really good flight crew. We have our first officer who is on his OE, so he's proving he knows what he's doing. Um, he just landed the plane today. Yeah, rough, uh, <laughs> but he'll improve. Uh, but the flight itself was really, really good. Our passengers were great. We did have one gentleman who chose uh, deplaning to pull out his vape. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm flying 320. We're flying a 321, so I'm up in front as lead, which means I really don't do a lot on this aircraft. Um, I don't do service. 
Um, I am supposed to do a hand service which for one through five, but it doesn't really work very well since I don't have anything. Uh, the cart is always, you know, in the aisle. So my crew took care of uh, one through five for me today. I did a trash run, coffee and noodles. You know, if someone orders noodles, which when one person orders noodles, everybody orders noodles. Um, that sounds like a joke or something, but um, yeah, really easy flight. No drama, no trauma, really perfect. Um, we uh, The flight was three hours and 11 minutes, something like that, really good tailwind. And we are going to fly up to Baltimore now, and that's probably just a little bit more than an hour. So that'd be a nice, easy flight. Um, easy weather, we did have a little bit of turbulence, but yeah, easy peasy, nothing to worry about. And uh, yeah, so I will see you next in Baltimore. Hey guys, welcome to Baltimore. Um, so I think I told you about the first leg of the day. Super easy, so nice, great crew, fantastic passengers, not a single issue, nothing. It was so nice. Um, got to Atlanta, things kind of changed a little bit. Uh, the flight from Atlanta here to Baltimore was easy, perfectly smooth, no problem. It was just the boarding process, which was really, truly chaotic. It can frequently be sort of chaotic in Atlanta. I think it's probably partly due to the fact that it's one of the busiest airports in the world, and maybe it's just difficult to get to the gate, and by that time, people are kind of frazzled. I don't know, but boarding can be a little bit tricky in Atlanta. Uh, it was further complicated by apparently there was a fight at the gate, which is not a shocker with my airline. It's not uncommon to see that on YouTube. Uh, but there was a fight which must have kind of distracted people who were working there because we had seat duplications up and down the plane. One had three different people assigned to the same seat. So thankfully, we had a handful of empty seats on the aircraft so we could seat everybody. It was just truly chaotic. But the kicker, the real kicker, and the part that kind of burnt my toast and I'll be thinking about it as I get to bed, um, was, I really can't say the, this person's position, I probably even sh shouldn't say their gender. Um, this person works for a, works in an industry that should know better uh, that they can't just walk onto the plane and into the flight deck. Uh, this person is supposed to show me a piece of paper, introducing themselves to me so I know they're on board. Um, it's very important. And if you're a flight attendant, you might understand the situation that might have been in or what kind of person that might have been. Um, but they're supposed to introduce themselves to me first and then introduce themselves to the captain. Then they have to give a copy of a form to the captain just to let them know they're there. There's a whole process. Well, this person walked onto the plane uh, in their hand was the piece of paper, but it was folded up and I just barely saw it. I didn't see the form, but I just saw a piece of paper and I kind of figured, whatever. Did not introduce me to them, uh, did not introduce themselves to me and then uh, waltzed into the flight deck. Now, thankfully, they're wearing a gigantic black backpack. The backpack alone filled the entire area of the flight deck door to the beginning of that flight deck area. It's a very large, a huge backpack. I had my hand on the backpack and I was ready to pull her backwards. And I'm big and I'm fairly strong. I could have taken her down. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was just wildly inappropriate, hugely inappropriate. And um, they, they introduced themselves to the captain, they did what they had to do and they came out and I was like, listen, in the future, you need to talk to the flight, the lead flight attendant. You can't just walk on. And I was, I, I couldn't chew them a new a-hole, but I was pretty close. And uh, it was very satisfying. <laughs> it was very satisfying because this person needed to have a new a-hole chewed. Uh, and then 10 minutes later, not even 10 minutes later, we had a second person in the same role, different person, same role, who walked on board, said, hello, my name is, here's the form, and then they went, may I talk to the captain? And then they did, and when they came out, I was like, thank you so much for following, like, the rules. It, I mean, whatever. 
Um, yeah, it was startling. I was ready to grab that person by the back and pull them backwards. It would have been very easy uh, and um, whatever. Uh, but after boarding was completed, the flight itself was very, very easy. One hour, 19 minutes. Uh, my crew is fantastic. They managed to do a complete service on a 321 in like 20 minutes. They were very, very good. Um, but uh, yeah, waited for the shuttle, got to my room, finally pulled off my uniform shirt. And settling in with um, my birthday cake. This is just a little uh, coconut cake. There's, this is probably my screenshot. <laughs> I know I found that funny. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm settling in with a piece of a little mini cake from Walmart for my birthday by myself in this hotel room as I spit. <sighs> um, all right, so I, I dropped my cake. Um, back to a point I made at the beginning of this video. I was like, I wish I had friends. I don't have any friends. I do have friends. It's just, we don't really communicate very well and they live 3,200 miles away. And so, so I'm thinking my friend, Steve, my friend, Lex, um, Phil, Juan, there's, there's, and Marcus, of course, there's stuff. And my friend, Melanie, I have friends. It's just that we're not as close as we used to be. And there are thousands and thousands of miles away. And so I, um, I do feel lonely and that I don't have any friends when in reality I do have a handful of people who I, I do dearly love um and um yeah so I take back a little bit of what I said earlier but I still I do still feel sad so whatever uh I just dropped my piece of cake so I'll see you guys later I need to take all these clothes off and eat this cake that doesn't sound very PG I'll talk to you later <laughs> but <laughs> good afternoon guys hi welcome to the day after it's the day after my birthday so there's no pressure to have a fantastic day right just have a good day whatever you know it is what it is um it is 2 14 in the afternoon i'm taking the 2 30 shuttle while most of my crew is taking the 3 p.m shuttle our showtime is 3 40 and personally i don't think that's enough time honestly to get to the gate comfortably you know i'm i'm i want to walk i don't want to run i want to get a cup of coffee because we're going to have a very long day today so i'm taking a little bit early shuttle so i have to message my crew i mentioned it last night but just to double check them make sure that they know not to wait for me um so i did not get a really great night's rest i was so tired yesterday that i took um, I went to bed at like 6 o'clock, 6.30 last night, and I woke up about mm, 1. I could not get back to sleep again until probably 11.30. Woke up, um, woke up at uh, 1 so I could eat some lunch and get ready for work. Um, I watched a fair number of YouTube videos and a, bit, a bunch of uh, news, which I really should avoid sometimes. Um, I want to stay in, informed, but sometimes it's just so much, you know. Uh, one of the uh, videos I watched was about that teacher who was shot by that her six-year-old student. I can't imagine. Um, and, you know, she was talking about the trauma and how difficult it is to get over um, being, you know, assaulted so violently, uh, especially by a student, you know, six-year-old. Um, and she was talking about how much support she has and how people from all over the world are, you know, writing to her and blah, blah, blah. And part of me is kind of flashing back to my assault. Isn't this the cheeriest of videos? Um, you new subscribers, you're so lucky you're getting a real dark day. Um, you know, if you haven't been around for my channel for a while, uh, back in 2007, I was, uh, stabbed in the chest with a chef's knife, an eight inch chef's knife in the chest. Yes, it, during a mugging. Um, and uh, it went through my ribs, through my lung. It cut my diaphragm down the middle, uh, sliced my spleen, the top lobe of my spleen, whatever that means. Uh, I got to keep it. That's all that matters. Um, and, uh, you know, that was a truly, truly traumatic experience. I think I made a video about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> of course. Um, but you know, it affects me every day. I think about it, it probably once a day in terms of uh, where I am in public, who's standing behind me, um, the movement of crowds, what the, you know, how dark it is, how safe I feel. Uh, and I certainly phys feel it physically um, almost daily. When I lay down on my uh, left-hand side, sometimes I can feel the sutures. I know, aren't I gross? They had to use permanent sutures, not the ones that dissolve uh, because they didn't want my diaphragm loosening up when it was being healed, you know. Um, but I can feel them sometimes scratch from the inside um, uh, of my skin. It's it's really eerie. Um, but it passes because it's, it's an everyday thing for me. But um, listening to this woman talk about the trauma of the situation and how she how she got all this support from all over the world, I'm thinking of how many victims of violent crime don't receive that support and that um, uh, no one's questioned whether she was in the right room at the right time. You know, so many victims are questioned as to their culpability in their own, um, you know, being assaulted. So, um, yeah, that's, those are my thoughts <laughs> this morning as I'm waiting to get ready for work, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, we're going to be flying to Vegas today. Um, I know, bright, cheery topic. Bounce. Um, we are going to be flying to Vegas today. It's uh, blocked at 5 hours and 20 minutes. Yesterday, our flight was 3 hours and 4, 20 minutes, I think, because we had a, a great tailwind. Well, we're going to pay for that tailwind today and having a headwind. So it's going to take us a long time to get to Vegas. And then we have a two and a half hour sit just to make the day better. And then we fly up to Portland where I have a 28 hour layover. I am looking forward to resting and sleeping. I love that hotel for um, resting. And there's a good Goodwill about a mile away from there. So I'll make a visit over there. But um, yeah, ta -da! that's my little ramble for today. Uh, the next time I see you will be, probably be at the airport uh, here in Baltimore or in Las Vegas. All right, so I'll see you soon. All right, so proof I can complain about anything. So I uh, left the hotel a half hour early just to make sure I would have time to get random, stop somewhere, get coffee, maybe a little bite to eat. I had something at the hotel, but maybe a little bit of something hot to eat uh, and then get to my gate without having a rush, right? Well, I get here, of course, I'm not random. Not that I'm complaining because that is a very unusual occurrence, uh, but then I find out our flight is delayed. I so I have all this extra time. Uh, so I'm gonna go get a bite to eat, a coffee, um, have a seat, and um, look over uh, my emails. I just got an email from the company that we just uh, graduated 302 new flight attendants. Many of them are gonna be coming to um, Las Vegas, Orlando, and one other base. So we're already almost at 1,000 flight attendants in Las Vegas. That's a lot. Um, and yeah, looks like we're getting more. Yay for seniority, right? All right, I will see you guys probably in Las Vegas. Hey there, so I found a seat at the gate. I have a brand new coworker sitting right next to me, very exciting. Uh, but I forgot to tell you, um, while at the hotel waiting for the shuttle, I met this young lady who was stunning. Um, and I think her name was Carla. She is the cousin of Philip, you know, I've mentioned Philip fairly often, and I love uh, flying with my coworker Philip. He's fantastic, and um, turns out it's his cousin who's just joined us, and she was going into DC for the first time. Um, hi guys! Um, so very, very fun. So if for some reason she's watching this video, welcome to the family, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in Vegas. Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome to Portland. I did not have a chance to uh, talk to you between the last two legs. Um, I'm gonna get to the hotel room, take off his uniform, oh my God, and uh, I'll try to put together a synopsis. I don't even know what happened. The day's been very long, but I will see you soon. Well, thank you very much. I feel very welcome. 
Good morning, guys. Hi, welcome to Portland. It is 1.34 in the morning. Uh, I'm gonna jump in bed in just a few minutes. I've been watching um, Property Brothers for a little while, uh, but I figured before I go to bed, I should give you a little synopsis of what today was like since I didn't really get a chance to talk to you very much. Um, today, we flew from Baltimore to Las Vegas. We had a short sit that was supposed to be longer but there's a reason it was shorter. Uh, and then we flew to Portland today. So it's been a, a fairly long day. Um, so the first leg, which was Baltimore to Las Vegas, was a bit challenging in that we had significant headwinds. Uh, we had 133 knots, uh, a headwind of 133 knots at one point. Now multiply 133 times 1.456. And I believe that is like the equivalent of miles per hour. We should have been traveling ground speed wise about 560 miles an hour, 570. Uh, but we were traveling closer to 400 miles an hour. So the flight just dragged on and on. For the most part, our passengers handled it very, very gracefully. Many of them slept or napped. We did a couple services for snacks and beverages. Both of our, our trash carts were completely full by the end of the flight, and most of our potable water uh, had been used. So it was a very, very busy flight, which is great because it kind of takes the edge off a long flight. Um, the only sour note of that flight was, you know, um, I'm very um, energized and very highly motivated to uh, make sure everyone has a nice time and to set a nice high energy but not crazy tone on the aircraft and 99.99 percent .99 of the time it really makes for a very effective tool in having a nice time with our passengers and also my my crew my cabin crew and flight crew this flight crew was not having it they did not dig me or my energy and that's fine they're trapped up in a little teeny tiny little room in the front of the airplane so that's fine. Uh, and if they don't want to be nice, they don't have to come out. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. Kind of. Uh, but uh, yeah, neither of them were very, very nice. Now, um, that isn't atypical, you know, for pilots sometimes after long days. But um, I kind of understand in that both of them had plans on commuting home. But we had such a significant headwind um, that, uh, yeah, we should have been traveling like 560 miles an hour, but in reality, we were probably traveling about 400 miles an hour. It just wasn't, it wasn't great because I think they both missed their commute, uh, and it definitely colored their mood. So hmm, there we go. That was the worst part of the flight. Uh, we had a bunch of passengers who were going to make very short connections, and I don't know if they've actually made them or not, but... Um, I did my best to try to encourage most of our guests to remain seated while those uh, connectors got off, but people didn't really listen, so I did my best. Uh, the flight from, uh, well, we got to Las Vegas, we had originally had a two and a half hour long set, uh, sit, but because we were delayed so much and we had such a significant headwind, that um, sit was reduced to probably closer to 45, 50 minutes. So that was fine. That's so a little bit of a silver lining there. Um, do you remember last week, I think I told you about um, a gate agent that I helped out answering questions for, for passengers. I was waiting for my crew to arrive. They had been stuck on, a, on the tarmac in uh, a Southwest Airlines flight. So I was there at the gate with nothing to do except help this poor gate agent who, or guest service agent who was just being assaulted by passengers. I mean, she was just being pelted with unpleasant people. And I, I, stu I stood there for like an hour and a half helping her out. And she was so appreciative. Well, I saw her tonight uh, while we were uh, heading towards our gate to go here to Portland. And she, um, she was so excited. She ran away and then ran back. She literally... To stop me from walking, she straddled my luggage with her legs to stop me. And she was so excited to see me. And she gave me a Starbucks gift card with $20 on it. And this is a guest service agent, our, our gate agent. Um, I, I must have really impressed her uh, because she gave me this 
this gift card, which I want to do something for her now in exchange because it was so generous, really, especially uh, since, you know, I don't, I don't know how they're paid, but she was apparently very grateful for the help I offered. But so it was very nice to see her there. Um, the flight from Vegas to Portland was really easy. It was one hour, 54 minutes or one hour, 56 minutes. Uh, my uh, young lady, my coworkers, the young ladies in the back, Paloma, and isn't that the best name, Paloma? And um, Aisley, Aisley, the two of them are very young, um, super nice, super darling, darling. They're so nice. Um, and, um, my chaser, we had two chasers today. Both were great. Um, the second one was, um, God, what was his name? <gasps> I can't remember his name. He was so, so handsome. Um, so nice. He's, he's straight. So he's not on my team, but he's so nice. And he was so patient. You know how I talk a lot and I don't seem to stop ever. Yeah. Uh, for two hours. But the poor thing heard every story and he was so patient with me <laughs> I was I was so appreciative but the four of us really seemed to have a nice time today so I was I was very grateful for my crew um passengers were great but Portland flights are usually pretty cool um so yeah real great kids we had a couple really cute kids on board um yeah got to the room we had a really nice uh I love this hotel the staff is fantastic. I got a giant room. My my room is like massive. Look at the size of this room. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was today. Today was uh, fairly long. Um, I have a bit of a headache, um, but uh, I'm going to have a little something to eat. And then I'm going to get back in that bed right there. And um, my plan tomorrow is probably to sleep in. And then uh, head over to a Google that's around the corner. Um, I have th been thinking about going into Portland. It's been a long time since I've been in town. But um, the last time I was there, I, I had such unfortunate experiences with homeless people. It really colored my perception of being downtown in Portland. So I think I might just hang out in this area hit that goodwill, come on back and play some video games or whatever, not study for recurrent. Yay. Um, and there you go. Ta-da. Thank you so much for your patience and listening to me talk because I've just spent almost eight minutes telling you about what my day was like. All right. Um, I don't know how these other YouTube channels can film a four-day trip in a 12-minute video. I don't know how they do it. I can't, obviously. Uh, let me talk to you tomorrow. All right. See you later. Bye. Hey guys, good morning. It is 1044 in the morning. Speaking of 44, it's 44 degrees here in Portland. Guess who forgot to pack a pair of jeans? <laughs> I thought I put jeans in my bag. Guess who's wearing? Ta-da! <laughs> it's 44 degrees and I'm wearing shorts. But you know, I'm from New England. It's warm enough for shorts if it's not snowing, right? <sighs> It's brisk. I'm going to head over to uh, Goodwill quickly. It's a short walk. And then uh, head back to the hotel room. Warm up. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. I will see you probably at Goodwill. I think the pillow is having a better time than I am. Mm. But um, so I'm at Goodwill. And um, I'm browsing the shelves. And I hear Stephen. It's Anna. So if you remember, I was here not long ago and I met this group of women and we all kind of formed a little gaggle in the middle of the store here having a great time. Um, it, she's one of those ladies and I couldn't remember her name when I first met her. I kept remembering Charity's name, but I couldn't remember her name, but now it's burned into my head. Anna, Anna, Anna. Because uh, I asked her like five times, poor thing. Um, but she was super, super nice. We had a very nice conversation here in the store, uh, but it was just kind of weird. You know, <laughs> as small as my channel is, it's funny how often like I'll go anywhere and someone's like, is your name Stephen? <laughs> I wonder what other, like, really successful YouTubers go through. I don't know, but uh, it's very nice and it's very flattering. So um, I really can't find a lot here in the store. Um, I'm thinking of getting this. It is an, uh, it's a glass a um, apple by Anchor Hawking. I don't think it's terribly vintage as there is a 
uh, barcode that there, but I really think it's fun. It's a, literally a candy dish, but it's an apple, candy apple. Blah, blah, blah. This is a Seiko uh, clock, which um, I could really use actually in the house. And um, there's a little airplane, it's the second hand. And this is supposed to turn to show like daylight and I don't know, but it's cheap. It's like eight bucks and I like it. Um, I'm tempted. I really don't do, do puzzles very often, mostly because I have cats. But this was very attractive to me for some reason. It's only $5, so that is a little daunting. But I don't know, I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking of buying this. It's a vintage card game by Parker Brothers from like the 60s, the early 60s. And I think people buy these for some reason. All the cards are here. I counted all 150 of them. Uh, but that's it. I really can't find much more. So I think I'm going to poke around one more time. There's a new cart coming out. And then I'll just head back to the hotel. I'll see you later. Hey guys. All right. So it's about four degrees warmer out here. But I can still see my breath. It's very fresh. Uh, I picked up something else and I dropped off something else at Google. I'll show you what I got at, at the uh, hotel room. But um, I am going to stop in Red Robin. I have never been to a Red Robin before. so But I'm hungry and it's cold. So I'm going to pop in Red Robin. And one of the reasons I'm doing so is my phone made a couple noises while I was in Goodwill. Ka-ching, ka-ching. So someone bought an 8-inch uh, dessert dish or a salad dish that I had listed on eBay for. They paid $28 for it, plus shipping. I think I paid a dollar for it, maybe. Uh, and then someone bought a silicone bar mat that, with an absolute vodka logo uh, with rainbow stripes and all that. I think I paid five for that. They paid 45 and plus like $28 shipping for that to Kentucky. So I had two good sales for how much I, you know, spent. So I'm going to spend a little money at uh, Red Robin. Let's see what happens here. You know, I just walked in. Oh, there you go. You're welcome. And um, walked out because I just realized I just earned all that money off those two things. Why am I going to give it to Red Robin? I have food in my lunch bag in my hotel room. Uh, and I wasn't getting good vibes. I'd never been in there before, but it didn't seem like a, an aspirational place for lunch. So I'm probably more tempted to go into the old spaghetti factory than Red Robin. So <laughs> yeah, I'll probably stay at the hotel room. All right, so I wasn't kidding about going to the old spaghetti factory. I'd never been there either, but I walked in and uh, just trying to find a menu. And the place looked like Disney meets Rocky Horror. It was not uh, fun. And uh, I barely walked in and the guy who I assume was the Mater D or whatever uh, yelled, sir, I'll be with you in a moment. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was just trying to find a menu. Thanks. And uh, he pointed at the table as he ran by and the menu is printed on a piece of paper placemat. No. Uh, so <laughs> there's a, a Thai restaurant here and you know, you can't go wrong with Thai. So I'm just going to grab some Thai uh, rather than be yelled at at the old spaghetti factory. Yay. Hey guys. All right. So it looks like my higher power is clearly telling me Steven, you have food in your hotel room. You do not need to eat out today. Um, I walked into that Thai restaurant. I was there maybe 15 minutes, maybe longer. I know someone yelled hello at me when I walked in the door, sat myself down, and um, it was maybe 15 minutes later. I'm like really getting frustrated because I'm like, I'm hungry. There's almost nobody in here in terms of customers. Um, and so I'm like looking around, preparing myself to leave, but I'm hungry, so maybe I'll stay. And I hear what I think is the wait staff berating a customer. I don't even know what they were saying, but the tone was so bad that I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to be here today. So I'm gonna stop in Target, which is right here for a uh, maybe an energy drink and a little snack just to get me to the hotel. Then when I get there, 
I'll show you my little bit of my mini haul. I picked up something, I left something behind, and that's my day here in Portland, or Vancouver, Washington, I should say. Um, one of my coworkers, Aisley, 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 um, she really desperately wanted vegan pizza. Uh, and there's apparently a hot joint in Portland. I am not into vegan pizza. Um, uh, really not. And, <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've been into Portland. Um, the last time was kind of scary and I really don't want to repeat that again for a little while. So I think I'll, I'll kind of hang back and let Portland figure itself out a little bit more maybe, uh, before I spend some time going down there. I'm very happy with my hotel here. The staff is lovely. The room is very comfortable and that's a Goodwill. So, I mean, what else do I need, right? Uh, so I'm gonna see you later after I hit Target and uh, yeah, see you soon. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my hotel room here. Uh, I'm surrounded by a, a strange little melange of the word, uh, of weird little items. I'll show you those in a moment. But uh, I just finished watching a movie called uh, The Discovery by Robert Redford and Jason Segal. And the lead actress, I forget her name, gosh, just really, really talented. Uh, but uh, it's about what happens after we die and what kind of planes of reality we might go to. And really, really interesting, a little trippy, but uh, definitely good. And um, it's about 4.17. I was thinking of lying down and taking a nap, which would have been disastrous. Because I have to be asleep by maybe... I don't know, eight o'clock maybe that would be a good time nine at the latest I have to wake up at the latest by 3 a.m. so I can get to the shuttle and get to work tomorrow so a nap right now would have been the worst case scenario so yay for the first time housekeeping waking me up was the perfect solution but uh, so I did go to Goodwill as you saw earlier I bought a few items I put some things back um, so one thing I did keep that I showed you was this clock uh, right here. I did a little bit of research. It's by General Electric in their Telecron um, series. And if you look at the wood and the brass, it's in perfect condition. It's from the 50s and it looks like this. Really interesting back um, and uh, really, really neat. And there's actually apparently a whole bunch of people who collect clocks. Who knew? Um, so I, I just love it. Uh, it's made in Ash, um, Ash, Ashland. I'm sorry. I don't know why I struggle with that. Ashland, Massachusetts. And a, a very popular wood there is red maple. And I think that's what this is, uh, red maple. Very pleased with that. I'm going to keep it for myself, I think. But I might list it because apparently they sell. Something else I bought, a card game uh, that I've never played before. I tried reading the rules, sounded very strange, but it came with the whole, the cards and the little plastic insert and the directions and all that stuff for $2. It might only sell for 10 or $12, but that's okay. It was, um, it's just really neat. I mean, it's from 1963. It's a neat thing. Um, I got this is a lamp, Ot lamp. Uh, the base lights up different colors. The thing here has three different LED settings. Really fantastic light that I could use for either photographing things for eBay, which would be very helpful, or I could use it in my room literally as my bedside lamp. I like to have different uh, varying degrees of light and dark. Um, and uh, this is a fantastic lamp and it was really, really great. Um, so I got that and lastly you can see here there's a selection a melange you might say of seashells now I have a thing for seashells I don't know why seashells acorns feathers evidence that there was life at one point but it has since passed bones teeth I just love sort of evidence of things having been around but are no longer with us. I know that sounds creepy, doesn't it? Um, my friend Melanie also agrees with me as well. I think I bought her um, an otter skull or a beaver skull one year for her birthday. She was thrilled. Um, but these are really interesting shells. Look at these. Aren't those wild? And there's this one, kind of ugly. Um, 
one of my favorites. It's really pretty. And this one's gorgeous. It feels like a weapon. It's very, very heavy. And it's like a spear point or something. It's really, really neat. Um, and what else? This is kind of cool. This one's kind of cool. I love that one. And shells sell on eBay. So I might just either sell these, some of these individually uh, or sell them as a lot. I'm not sure, but all of these were $4. This is one of those shells that you would see uh, put into someone's braids, for example, or in like a wind chime or something, but it's gigantic. It's like a huge version of it. Look at those. It's very strange. Um, but uh, so I'm going to pack all this stuff up in my suitcase. I've got plenty of room because I knew I would do some shopping. Uh, and that is what I bought on my layover here. Um, I am going to probably watch another movie, um, eat some more pizza, and then uh, jump in bed about 7 o'clock and read for a bit. Nice, relaxing layover. Uh, tomorrow morning, our shuttle is at 4. Our showtime at the airport is 4.30. There should be plenty of time at that hour. And then we'll be uh, just jetting back to Las Vegas hopefully back in Vegas by about 7.30 in the morning. So it'll be nice and early. I can jet home and love on my cats. I've been missing Buddy and Eleanor, something fierce. Oh, um, if you're still watching this video, um, March 12th was Eleanor's gotcha day. That's when I found Eleanor under a car uh, in my old parking lot. And uh, I went looking for the video my first video that I included of Eleanor. And I, I created a post. So if you haven't seen it or com uh, a community post, go to my page's um, homepage and look under community and you should see a video or a, a post with a link to a video uh, where you'll meet Eleanor for the first time. And that was, was that four years ago? Or three years ago, four years? I think it was four years ago. Uh, and um, I cried, and I'll warn you, I'll warn you, it is kind of sad. Um, I literally was crying when I saw this video of Eleanor. It's when I first found her, she weighed five pounds. She was very ill. She had been neutered and her incision was open and it ended up being infected. Uh, and she would have died under that car had I not found her and uh, taken her to the vet gonna get emotional now because she is such a big part of my heart and my soul uh, to see her even back then just so sick and so helpless was just just emotional uh, because today she is full of life and brightness and humor and mischievousness she's just a a little elf a sprite of a cat i love her so much but um so i was uh, just thinking of her i thought i'd share that little video with you warning it is it can be triggering especially if you love cats but um there you go i will see you guys um maybe later on today if something happens or i will see you tomorrow all right toodaloo good morning guys on the shuttle it's 4 a.m it's raining and cold and I have a toothache. I don't have many teeth left. When I get a toothache, it hurts. Ugh, and look how blurry this is. I will talk to you at the airport. Look at the cat! All four of us were randomed. But Portland makes it easy, so can't complain about that. Welcome to Portland! Yay! Hey guys, hi. Oh, look at that. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to Las Vegas. The flight was largely uneventful from Portland here. Uh, really quite nice. Uh, pretty much everyone was sleeping, so that was fine. Uh, my chaser for this one leg was super, super nice. Really nice guy, young. Um, he He's, I guess he joined the airline back in December or something. So he's been around uh, long enough to know what he's doing. He's fantastic. He's very organized. He put together the whole cart. He like, I don't know, he, he did above and beyond, which is nice. Um, and he's very enthusiastic and very energetic and super, super pleasant to our guests. Like ideal flight attendant. It was great. Uh, but it was also, <laughs> it must have been a little bit like flying with me uh, when I'm feeling energetic and over the you know, uh, fun, fun, fun. Um, this morning I have a headache. My, I have a toothache. I have one tooth, a molar back here. 
and there's a cavity that I really have to take care of. Um, and I have a, like this awful toothache and I just was not feeling 100%. Uh, and uh, so <laughs> it was nice that he was taking the reins of being you know, super motivated, but I can imagine that sometimes working with me when I'm like high-end energy is probably a lot. I <laughs> have to think about toning myself down sometimes, but um, yeah, so super nice, but I was, I was just not like at a hundred percent. So I, I am famished. I slept okay last night, um, but I really didn't eat very much yesterday except for a couple pieces of pizza from 7-Eleven, like high end. Um, so I stopped over here at Black Bear Diner for a cup of coffee and um, an omelet because I'm starving um, and just a moment ago as I was talking to you my phone went zzz, uh, looked and I saw a notification that I sold another item on eBay so it's paying for my breakfast it was a, a tiki mug from tiki farm I guess 2001 I think I paid I don't know two dollars for it I sold it for 30 or 35 so that's paying for my breakfast yay and there's a Goodwill next door. So if they're open by the time I finish my breakfast, I'll go over to Goodwill. Um, I did get a stack of birthday cards, which I will open shortly. Uh, and then um, I have to go back to the airport uh, before going home. Uh, the post office doesn't open till 10, but there are three packages waiting for me. Um, I know that I've ordered a couple pieces from Amazon, so I know I, some of those are probably Amazon purchases, but there might be a little birthday present there too, so I will look at that. So I'll probably finish this video up once I go to the post office, just in case there's something to say thank you for, uh, and um, I'll open up the cards when I get into the car. So. I'm going to enjoy my breakfast and I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> Buddy, she wants to play. Play. <laughs> Ah, oh, buddy. They're back at it. Oh, I'm serious. Oh, you've had enough, huh, buddy? Hey, guys. Good evening. Actually, good morning. It's exactly midnight. <laughs> the last time I saw you, it was probably like 9 a.m. So the whole day got away from me. Um, I was at Black Bear Diner. The last time I saw you, I had a ham and cheese three egg omelet that was spectacular with some coffee that was very, very welcome. Um, I went over to Goodwill, which is right around the corner on Las Vegas Boulevard. Yes, there is a Goodwill on Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, and um, popped in there, picked up a couple shirts I really liked a lot. I'll, I'll point them out when I wear them next. I got some barware, a couple odds and ends to resell on, um, on eBay. Something else sold. I don't even know what it was. I just heard my phone go ka -ching. So I will look at that tomorrow while I pack them all up. I've got four things to send out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had fun as usual at Google until, hmm, until this guy um, felt the need. I was in my uniform still from work. I still had my lanyard on and everything. Uh, some guy came up and felt the need to unload every resentment he seemed to have for the airline industry itself and then uh, personally about my own airline and all of the ways he's been wronged by them and so on and so on. Now, I am not that surprised to hear that kind of stuff at the airport, um, but I didn't expect it at Goodwill, you know. Um, my reaction and my response, I had to be very, very mindful of the fact that I was in my uniform. And um, so I could not be as cutting in my reply as I would have liked to have been. That's a very spooky sculpture, isn't it? Oh, sorry for the noise. I have the door open so the cats can look outside. 
Um, yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't respond as I would have liked to, but that's probably best for everybody. Um, I would have only been reinforcing his image of my airline had I said what I wanted to say. So it's probably a good thing. Um, uh, came home, hung out with the cats, took a nap for like three or four hours, ruining any chance I have of going to bed at a reasonable hour tonight. But, uh, it was a nice day. It was a nice day to, uh, end work so early in the day. It felt like I had the whole day off. So, that's great. What I should have been doing, especially while I was at breakfast, you know, just sitting there watching YouTube videos, I have to find a dentist uh, because I do have um, a bit of a cavity back here that needs to be looked at. Um, and um, it's just it's something I've been putting off and yeah. So I have to look for a dentist and maybe see if I can set up an appointment on Monday or something, but blah, blah, blah. Thank you, as always, for following me, uh, following along with me on my little journey uh, for this four-day trip. Uh, it's a bit all over the place, as usual, but some of you like it. So, um, yeah, I think I'll say uh, thank you and good night. I'll talk to you guys later. Fly safe.